Hi everyone, it's me again, David Slade, commercial real estate partner at Wright Hassel. I'm back after a hiatus two weeks ago on account of one of the few little items of news that have been happening of late. Uh, I wasn't in the queue, but if I'd been in the queue and been a VIP, I'd of course have been like Beckham rather than Schofield and Willoughby. Anyway, great excitement yesterday with the publication of the Legal 500, which is that wisdom, that Rodman's football yearbook, that uh, time form of racing fans that rates us as lawyers. And of course, one always looks for oneself, first of all. And I was interested to see I was described as helming the investment property desk here at Wright Hassel. Now that sounds like a mixed metaphor to me. Surely the only thing that you helm is a ship rather than a desk, but maybe helming a desk is an expression I haven't heard of before because uh, I looked elsewhere in the same article and the same scribe described my friend Paul Morton at Lodders as helming the property investment desk at Lodders. So it must be an expression that's flying about there. So there you go, you've got two rated helmsmen for investment work to choose from in Warwickshire. Now, my topic today is another COVID-related case resume, and it involves Cineworld and the lovely picture house brand, and in particular the one at the Trocadero, which I've been to on a couple of occasions. I think I last visited to see Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood at the Trocadero Picture House in London. So one of the landlords in the litigation was London Trocadero LLP. Now, the landlords were pursuing Cineworld for arrears incurred during a time when coronavirus restrictions required them to close their cinemas. Uh, and the Court of Appeal was asked to consider whether Cineworld remained liable for rent or not during the time of closure. Now, Cineworld advanced some interesting arguments. Uh, they said that COVID restrictions caused a failure of basis. Now, that's a legal doctrine which says that where a benefit has been conferred on a joint understanding that the recipient's right to retain it is conditional, then if the condition is not fulfilled, the recipient must return the benefit, which should therefore give rise to a restitutionary claim, which is a claim for reimbursement. Uh, effectively against the landlords. So here the benefit for the landlord was receipt of rent, which Cineworld said should be conditional on the tenant being able to occupy their premises. Now, alternatively, Cineworld said that there should be a term implied into the lease that for any period during which the permitted use became illegal, the obligation to pay rent should be suspended. So an implied term in its lease. And the Court of Appeal rejected both the failure of basis and the implied term arguments, referring to previous recent judgments, asserting that terms should only be implied into leases very rarely, either where the contract uh, would lack commercial or practical coherence without it, or where the necessity for implying a term is so obvious that it goes without saying. Uh, and a key focus of the judgment was the allocation of risk. To imply terms, the terms that the tenants were suggesting, uh, would contradict the express terms of the lease and reallocate the risk bargained for between the parties. So Cineworld tried another interesting argument. Under the usual rent suspension clause in one of the leases, rent was to be suspended where the premises were destroyed or damaged so that the tenant was unable to occupy or use the premises. Cineworld argued that damage here could be financial and not just physical damage. The sole permitted use was as a cinema, uh, and the rent cessor clause therefore provided for rent to be suspended where government restrictions on account of coronavirus lockdown damaged the premises by making them unfit for cinema use. And the court rejected that argument, saying that that was a distortion of the natural meaning of words. Damage was used in the lease in the usual way alongside the word destruction and therefore only meant physical, not financial damage. 
So Cineworld lost. Now, I did like the conclusion from one of the commentators on this case, which I'll read. I have no knowledge of this commentator's particular politics. This is one of a series of cases, she wrote, arising out of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has illustrated how English courts value certainty and precedent over short-term alleviation of purported unfairness. From a landlord's perspective, this is in welcome contrast with certain European countries where leases have been deemed to have been frustrated or state-sponsored rent holidays have been imposed. She carried on, the Court of Appeal has once again demonstrated its reluctance to, to uh, de depart from long-established landlord principles and again shown why England and Wales is an excellent place for property investment. So there you have it. Everything is all right after all. Investors do invest in beleaguered Britain. And I'll see you all in two weeks' time.